Welcome back, this is Yink Froggy, and uh, this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make ghosts in Photoshop. Um, I like them in black and white, I think they look cooler, but you can certainly keep the color. The main thing to remember about ghost images is that you want two images. You need a background and you need your ghost, of course, your foreground, and the reason for that is so you can see the background through the ghost when you apply transparency to the ghost. So these are just a few I did today. Uh, I chose uh, graveyards and Victorian women. I think this one looks especially creepy. And another thing to remember that is effective on ghosts is that mostly the whites are what show and the darks are more transparent. Um, I just learned that from looking at ghost images or supposed ghosts on the internet. So let's get started. This is my uh, Victorian woman that I've already cut out from a background. It's a black and white image. If you find a black and white image, make sure you make it RGB. Go to Image Mode RGB, which stands for Red, Green, Blue. That turns it into a color image, at least the ability to use it with a color background. So I'm going to hit Control C to copy it. Cutting an image from the background, like I've done here, is another lesson, but it's pretty easy. You can use the Extract tool, so look that up in your Photoshop index. So I'm going to get rid of this image, and here's my background. Cool little chapel with this old cemetery in Ireland. Thanks to Mark Dickman for this awesome image. The only thing I did to it was I reversed it, I added the stormy sky, and I took out a utility pole. So I'm not going to add my my foreground. I just draw a little square and hit Control V to paste it down. And I'm going to go to Edit, Free Transform to position it and size it. I want her a little bit more realistic size, just by dragging on the corner tab here in the selection box. And then I can position it where I want. I think I'm going to put her right on the footpath here. And keep your background in mind because when you make it transparent, you'll be able to see it through. So I will be able to see the corner of the chapel coming through. So right about there, click the check mark to apply my transformation. I'm going to add a little contrast and brightness to make the whites a little pop a little more. So I just go to Image, Brightness, Contrast, click OK. There's different effects you can uh, apply on Ghost. There's a filter called Plastic Wrap. Go to Artistic, Plastic Wrap. I think all versions of Photoshop have that. And as you can see, it gives you these um, ethereal, wispy streaks of light that you can uh, mess with the sliders here. There's a highlight strength, smoothness, and detail. And it kind of makes it look like something's appearing in front of you. I'm not going to use it for this image, but that's one you can play with. The filter I am going to use, though, is um, Distort Diffuse Glow. What that does, it gives an overall glow to the image. Make sure you're in black and white for this. And um, you have a glow amount, and you have clear amount. So just play with it till you like it. Click OK. And um, another glow you can do is on the outer glow. Go to Layer, Layer Style, Outer Glow and you'll get a, outer, a layer style box. Make sure that you choose white, so click this color box, hit white, click OK, and then you can play with the size of the outer glow, see? And the spread, and the, trans the opacity. Make it transparent or opaque. So I'm going to give her a little bit of an outer glow. Just subtle. Click OK. Um, I mentioned earlier that I like to add some blur so that the ghost looks like it's maybe, it kind of makes it look like the ghost is there but not quite there, kind of in uh, another dimension. Go to Blur, Gaussian Blur, and your selection box has a slider where you can just adjust the amount of blur you want. So you can play with that. So I'm going to make her just a little bit less sharp than the background so she looks like she's kind of in another dimension. Now the most important step is transparency. So I go to my eraser tool. 
and then opacity up here should be under 50 percent if you have it too high when you cut into it it'll make it too transparent you'll lose all your detail so I want some control over how much transparency so I've got a 35 slightly larger brush here and the first step I'm going to do is just apply one coat keep your brush down don't pick it up of transparency over the whole ghost and already you can see the background showing through alright now where there's more darks I'm gonna make that even more transparent ghosts are mostly white from what I've seen so I'm just gonna go into the hair here where it's darker and apply more transparency under the arm the neck wherever there's a shadow I'm making it transparent so that the darks become the background and you leave just the whites you don't have to be real meticulous about it right here her cuff and here on the bottom I want to make very transparent so she looks like she's fading into the background So I'm, I am picking up my brush and laying it back down to cut into it more. All right, let's back up and see how that looks. I think that's pretty effective. Um, I think I am going to make this image black and white as well. So now that we've finished with this layer, this foreground, we can merge them. So I go to Layer and hit Flatten Image. Merges. You can hit Merge Visible as well and now both are together they're merged and now I can go to image adjustments desaturate to take all the color out and there's the result I uh, hope you liked it if you did um, send me your comments and I'll have more cool tutorials for you in the future thank you Yank Froggy out